Hey everybody, welcome to Thoughts Old Radio, episode number 79. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I know my wife doesn't like it, but it doesn't matter because I like it. Episode number 79, folks, and tonight I bring you Jen Sicoli. Jen and I have known each other a long time, probably about 15 or maybe even 20 years, but we have a great chat nonetheless. Of course we have a great chat, probably because we've known each other for so long, but we have a great discussion about uh, energy, healing, healing energies, uh, different modalities, yoga, uh, meditation, and, and uh, much more than that. So please put your hands together for Jen and welcome her to the Thoughts Radio Studios. But also, don't forget to check out Volpe Martial Arts. Volpe Martial Arts is KW's hottest, newest kung fu and top keto martial arts school. Check them out. Sifu Adam Volpe. That's my brother. He's the head instructor there. Check it out. Also, this episode is brought to you by Papa Earth. PapaEarth.ca. Check them out. And don't forget to use the code word there, Fatso Meat, to save yourself $10 off a small box or $20 off a large box. Locally sourced meat delivered right to your door, Alberta and Ontario. Check them out, folks. All right, it's time to go. Episode number 79. Jen, I love you, babe. Thanks so much for your time uh, and your love and your knowledge and your wisdom. As always, I hope to see you soon. It was great chatting with you. Lily, take it away. That's so radio, the really great podcast show. That's so radio, the really great podcast show. So get your butt and get in your chair. Don't eat your nails and don't pull your hair. We'll talk about chicken or talk about steak. We'll talk about fat for, for goodness, goodness sake. sake. That's so, that's so, the really great podcast show. That's so, that's so, a very, very first podcast, podcast show. show. Hey everybody, welcome to Fatso Radio, episode number 79, and tonight I have a very, very special guest. All my guests are special, but Jen is a special guest from Sault Ste. Marie, hometown, Jennifer Sicoli, everybody. So welcome, Jen. Thank you. Jen, uh, like I said, I've known Jen for, I don't know, I want to say well, tw- over 20 years, right? We're not that old, really? but 20 years, okay. definitely, around there. And uh, yeah, so like I said, we grew up in Sault Ste. Marie together, but I want to bring Jen on board today to chat and to discuss her business and your philosophy, Jen, and all the things that you're into. So you have a business, Bloom, sorry. Yeah. And, um, and let's get into it, Jen. So let's get into the business itself. But even maybe before the business itself, what, what kind of brought you to that, right? What, what kind of motivated you or to get you to that? Yeah. So welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think growing up up north, and you would attest to this, that um, I... I was always deeply connected to nature and we spent a ton of time outside every season, right? And I knew the healing powers of nature. And then I also was a competitive dancer. So I knew the power of movement therapy and moving your body and feeling good. So when I was quite young, I knew I wanted to do something in that realm. Um, Of course, life gets away from you. And um, about 11 years ago, I had a trauma that kind of shook everything awake. And I started to kind of go on this healing journey for 11 years and found all these different things that worked for me. Um, So yoga, meditation, Reiki, energy healing. And I knew that I wanted to create basically that space, that healing space for other people um, to come to on their own journeys, basically. That's you. So um, so when you started Bloom, it was initially, it's like personal training or kind of boot camps you were saying? Yeah, and yeah. It's kind of evolved. It did. And I think, I don't know, maybe it's just as I've, I, I don't want to say our ages because, you know, <laughs> you did already age us at the top. <laughs> um, By the way, yeah. we both look great for our age, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think as I've gotten older, I've just started to now learn the power of stillness and um, coming back to yourself and your breath. So, Um, regardless of like, I started as a personal trainer, knowing my intention was to add yoga to the mix of those classes being offered. Um, but I had no idea at the time that eventually I would get so deep into different types of meditation and come into then Reiki energy healing and doing different mediumship stuff like Oracle card readings. Like I had no idea that I would morph down the spiritual line too, but, um, I think regardless of what it is, whether it's, um, you know, personal training or yoga or even dance, sometimes I work that into how I develop my yoga practices. Um, It's all movement, which helps the body just sort of shed stuff and kind of come back to balance. So did you... Um, did you want to get into a little bit of the, of the trauma itself or did you want to kind of just how, let's, let's talk about maybe how, how we work through it or whatever you want to do. I mean, up, up to you. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm totally it. fine with that. Okay. Like I, I've, 
it's funny because, um, well, it's on my website and sometimes people will read the story and they're like, I want to know a bit more. And I'm like, okay, You're like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've come to the space where I can do that. But um, basically I had, um, it was about 11 years ago in June um, where I, well, it was supposed to be during a normal childbirth basically. Um, but stuff sort of hit the fan and I ended up having four surgeries all within 12 hours of each other, um, which is not great for your body. Um, it's a bit of a shock, but, uh, the last surgery, basically they were just trying to desperately save my life. And, uh, the last surgery, I had a 10% chance of surviving and they actually sort of had prepped my husband for the potential that if, if I even made it through that surgery, that me making it through the night would be really not great. Uh, like the chances wouldn't be great just because of the risk of infection, which is why they don't generally do four surgeries in the same day. So, yeah. um, I had probably about 50 blood transfusions, which they told me after was, um, enough for about eight people. Um, so of course, when I woke up, I couldn't open my eyes. I was fully intubated. Um, I couldn't talk um, or anything like that, but I was trying to do sign language. And I remember feeling like my mom's hand and that feeling of love and that energy. And um, I kid you not, that's what got me through. And um, then started my healing journey, right? After I left the hospital, of course, um, it was to come home and continue to heal myself and learn how to do basic things. Like just even walking was very tiring. Wow. Um, for me, um, it was obviously it had residual effects on number of, um, number of avenues, you know, both physical and mental. Mm -hmm. And that's then how I kind of started getting into some of the more holistic mm -hmm. things for healing. Um, I did talk therapy, of course, for trauma and, um, I didn't feel it was a good fit for me. I already am pretty open, honest book, and it was easy for me to talk to people already about, um, what I was kind of going through, though it was good to dig into pieces. Um, I needed to physically actually do something. And so those somatic based kind of therapies like dance, like yoga, um, are starting to prove to be really successful for people who've gone through trauma um, and who have struggled with mental health. And I think that's why, like, I was so heavily attracted to them. Um, I've been doing yoga. I found yoga actually in my university days. And it was sort of my supplement to dance. After say, just after years. you finished, finished your peak dance years, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I moved from dance to yoga because it was like, to me, almost very basically similar. It's a set, you know, sequence of postures that you could get lost in um, and move to music, right? So um, I did yoga for probably about 10 years before having kids and then had to hit pause, of course, once the trauma happened. Uh, but eventually I found my way back and, um, and into meditation and into energy healing, which is what sort of drew me to then do Reiki at some point. So yeah, well, let's get into that perfect segue. Reiki. What, yeah. um, how, how did you get introduced to Reiki? Now, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but I, I think I'm, I want to say I'm level one and two trained. <laughs> now yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not, um, what am I trying to say? I should know that better, but, but it's been a few years for me now and I really was interested in it. And I'm still interested, of course, I don't know that much about it, of course, but please like, let me know, how did you get into it? And then if you can expand on it, what, what is it for you? I know it's quite um, powerful for a lot of people. It's amazing. Yeah. Like I, I think I, I'm trying to think of what year it would have been in my trauma that I found energy medicine. Um, I started going to a woman who did therapeutic touch. Um, she used essential oils. I got into that. Um, I got into this meditation. Um, and then I started seeing different energy healers and just dabbling in them all. And I had the largest shifts mentally, especially um, by doing those. And I, I, I think it was at some point when I was teaching yoga, um, I met this client who came in and um, she never told me who she was, but she was a Reiki master, a shamanic healer. And um, I just eventually was like, you know what? I need to do this. I need to take, to be honest with you, like I took Reiki to simply do my own self healing every day and to be able to then do it on my um, children as well. Um, because I, you, 
you know, you want to, of course, do everything you can as a mother to help your children's healing. Yep. And, and it's a I tool, thought, right? Like, I mean, yeah. Why am I going to these different energy healers if I can learn how to do this myself? The funny thing is, is that it ended up being like I saw the shift it created, especially in Nico, my youngest. Um, and even in myself, like how much it changed me that I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this for my clients. Wow. So I took Reiki 2, which then gives you the ability to do Reiki on other people. Yeah. Because I wanted my clients to be able to come to yoga and connect to their breath. And I could also send them good healing energy and love. And they could feel my energy as being this accepting warm space, right? Um but then I got addicted with that whole thing <laughs> that I was like, oh my gosh, like now I want to empower my clients to be able to do this too. Yeah. So I took Reiki three and, uh, or advanced Reiki. Some people call it that. And then I took my Reiki masters, um, to basically give me this whole toolbox of symbols to use. And I don't know, the sessions still, like, they blow my mind because especially in this time and space that we're in with the pandemic, everything's been via distance. And I still can't believe, like, how, and, like, I know it works, but I can't believe how amazing even the distance healing sessions have been. Um, so this is a real testament, I guess, to, to, the, to, the, to it working. I mean, if it worked through long distance, this is a great test. Yeah. Well, and it's this concept, right? That like, we're all, we're all made up of energy and as such, we're all connected, right? We're all one. And, yeah. and because of that, it doesn't matter how far apart we are, we can feel each other's energy, even via this meeting, right? Yeah. Or when I connect to people, even in Sault Ste. Marie for Reiki energy healing, right? Like it's, it can be, you know, and even like to, to that point, even thinking about somebody, right? Just, there's a connection, yeah. right? Just think, hey, yeah. before the you know before the show tonight, we say, oh, I'm going to be thinking, talking to Jen. What we're going to talk about? You're right. There's that. There's, and it's funny because hippies have always said, right? We're all connected, man. Yep, we're all connected, man. <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, totally. The, the jury's out, and we are connected. So, yeah, it, it's and interesting. It, it, to see how easily it actually happens, even if I have somebody who's a bit more skeptical or yeah. nervous or anything like that, sure. to see how easily it happens is sort of mind blowing. Um, and I don't know if it helps that I've had personal experiences with it um, or if it helps that I think for years, I mean, I think we're all innately intuitive. I think we just forget um, as we grow up and go through things. Mm -hmm. um, but I can remember even times when I was a young girl, like I, I was always a bit clairvoyant and I was terrified of that. Right. And I would shut wow. that down. I'm like, no, thanks. Yeah. Well, um, it's not normal. Right. It would be yeah, not, it, it, or, it quote unquote not normal. Exactly. It wasn't considered that at all. Yeah. So, and it, when my son was born, my youngest, he, he was very clairvoyant and would say things to me all the time. And I was like, wow, okay. And I'm like, this doesn't have to be a scary thing, right? Yeah. Like this, this can be a really empowering thing too. So I don't know if that all helps me do the Reiki or if it's just, I have a great group of clients. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How is, I have a question. So when, when, when people are introduced to Reiki for the first time or they're fairly new to it, how is it yeah. Is it well received or is it a, is it a mixed bag? I'm always kind of curious on that. I mean, I guess it depends on how people come to you, right? How do they hear about it? Was that a yeah, I think, I, I think it is a mixed bag because I think it's a difficult concept to explain. I think mm. it's difficult to understand. Um, it's even hard for me to sometimes explain exactly how it works, right? Like there's this healing, like it sounds a little crazy to say like, there's this healing energy in Mother Earth and we can all channel it through our hand chakras um, once they're awakened yep. <laughs> and then we're attuned and then we can do all these really powerful symbols and, and it sounds really out there. Yeah. But right? at the same time, isn't it, doesn't it, at the same time, it sounds so almost simple that it's perfect. To a child, you're like, okay, yeah, I get it. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. They must understand better than us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like my kids, like they love it. Um, uh, Nico, especially cause he's such a feeler. Um, right. he's just like, it right away he knows exactly what i'm doing where i'm doing it even if i'm not hands-on wow. um and i think it's like the way i try to explain it to people to simplify is that it's it's like when you go to the beach and you feel so amazing when you come home from the beach it's that that energy that just 
brings your body back into this balance and really it's all available to all of us and your body wants to be in balance. It's just life gets in our way a lot. And it just brings you back to that place of peace and balance where your body can do what it does, which is heal itself, right? Like it really can yeah. when you give it the love and attention it needs. Yeah, and I guess and so get rid of all the other junk, right? <laughs> yeah, and I think, so some people are like, oh my gosh, that sounds really cool. And I think until you have your first experience with it, you, it's, it's a difficult thing to understand or explain. And when you have your first experience with it, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, right? Like it's a little bit like it takes you back a bit. Yeah. Um, as a perfect example, my husband's totally a skeptic. Um, and every time I treat him, whatever it's for, whether it's headache, whatnot, it always fades. He usually falls asleep and he gets the relaxation that like he can't normally do like he's not a meditator <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's it takes him to that space for him and he's he's even sort of blown away and not sure to how to explain it right yeah. so i think everyone's a skeptic until they have their first sort of idea with it um or their first you know actual treatment um so it's interesting like it is a mixed bag like i would say half of my clients are totally on board with it um they've all tried it at least once and they totally love it. But um, I think that some people just are attracted to those energy type modalities or the whole, more holistic stuff too, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah. It's funny because it, um, it's, it's, it's interesting because I can, I can imagine, I can, I can speculate. Well, even for myself, when I did the training, I had treatment. Like when you just explained what, what your husband, Luke, I know Luke so well, yeah. but when you explained how, how Luke kind of felt, that actually made a lot of sense to me because a couple, of, a couple of the struggles that I had during my training was, hey, I'm not feeling anything, right? But then after, I actually just, you just reminded me now that I had a, I had a very, very general sense of overall calmness with myself. Yeah. I just Basically. felt completely chilled, you know, more than, more than normal. And, and I think maybe that was it. <laughs> and I just didn't know yeah. what that was it. You know what I mean by that? Totally. Yeah, I was expecting fireworks maybe. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Everybody's different. Like I, I have some clients who they just get that overwhelming feeling of calm that is hard for them to achieve in everyday life. Yeah, I think so. Some people feel like um, almost like uh, stress or tension, like lift off their chest so they can all of a sudden like breathe a bit more oh, deeply. Okay. Their head, like there's less tension in their head. Um, some clients are a little more visual like me and they actually see things too, like colors flowing or um, different signs and symbols. Like it's everybody's experience is just sort of uniquely theirs, right? And I think for the most part, people, the most common thing people say they feel during it would be tingling or warmth. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that warmth over body. Yeah. And it, it's like you said, it's the same intention as like when we send prayers to somebody or when we send love to somebody, yeah. that's, it's that intention, that love, that energy that like, we're just sending out. So you feel the warm fuzzies, just like when you hug somebody, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And it's funny. It's, it's almost taking me kind of a roundabout way in life to realize what prayer did now that I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, I haven't been surrounded by, by churches that much, you know, as in my, as I'm old, gotten older, but as a kid, you know, I went to church like, you know, all the time yeah. and but it's funny because now I, I realize that intention is a prayer, right? You can, whatever, right? It's the same thing. So it, it really makes a lot of sense. And I, you know, I wish we would have done this when we were, when we were kids, but it, now is better than ever, right? I mean, I know. I know. And, and well, and I say that too about my trauma healing, right? Like, I'm like, oh man, if I could have just done my Reiki training, I would have solved it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, well, you know, we have a good story though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I think that that's just it, right? Everybody who's done anything, right? Like we've all been through so much stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's what leads you to eventually what you're doing. And it teaches mm -hmm. you all these amazing lessons and makes you be the person or the healer or whatever it is you are, right? Like, yeah. um, and so, yeah, like it's, it's a really powerful powerful tool. Like I honestly, I do Reiki on myself every day um, because I do still struggle with anxiety. Yeah. Um, but you're still the regular life, right? You're still COVID. There's still yeah. <laughs> everything. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's, what's really fascinating. So COVID like it, it should be my anxiety's biggest trigger, sure. right? Like it should literally take me right back to my trauma, almost losing my life. Um, 
And I've done really well in this time and space because I use my tools every single day, right? And it doesn't have to be long. Like sometimes I meditate for five minutes and I do Reiki for five minutes. That's it. Sometimes it's longer. Sometimes I do it multiple times a day. But I've moved through this time and space pretty easily, which wow. blows my mind a little bit. That's because amazing. 10 years ago, that would not have been the case. I don't even think that would have been the case probably three years ago. So, um, yeah. So, and even just to be able to help my family through it too, um, you know, because of course there's lots of anxieties and fears with it. So it's, yeah, so it's, it's a big change for everybody. And uh, yeah. Now do you, is, is, is a lot of your business Reiki or is it, do you find, like, how do you, do you do a lot of yoga still? Or is it a mix? Like, oh yeah, it's yeah. totally a mix. I, um, I'm a Gemini, so I'm all about balance, right? Like I got two sides to me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and as such, I balance literally everything I do. Okay. So, um, if one week you see me do more of a vinyasa flow yoga, which is a bit more, um, obviously of a workout, mm -hmm. um, then next week you're going to see me do a restorative yoga practice with a longer, deeper meditation, the yoga nidra. Okay. Um, and then you're going to see me also balance that out with classes that, um, so some of them, I, a lot of the ones I've been doing lately, I've been adding in oracle readings too, which are just really empowering oh. messages. Um, and so you see me balance everything I do almost equally, um, okay. especially in this time and space. I have moved maybe a little bit more towards restorative yoga with Reiki um, at okay. the same time. And then uh, the yoga nidra meditation, which is can be anywhere from about I usually do at least a 30 minute meditation, but there's also a 45 minute script that I do. Wow. Um, yeah, like the more healing things is where I'm at now maybe, but it's an equal division between yoga, meditation and Reiki almost always. Wow. And you were saying uh, earlier before the show started that um, you've obviously transitioned to the online, right? The online space now yeah. with COVID and everything. And how is that transition? Is it working out okay for you? It is. I mean, it was bumpy, of course. For sure. <laughs> it's learning curve. Oh God. Um, Listen, why I do what I do is because I'm not tech savvy. So, um, yeah, I obviously I miss my physical space. It's just far too small to um, to to run classes in right now um, because we can't do physical distancing in my space. Like it, it was pretty tight already. I was limiting like my numbers on who came in, and but I still like small working with smaller groups because I love that phys like that one on one contact. Yeah. Um, what surprised me though about moving to uh, online space once I figured out the technical side of things um, was the fact that and maybe because I'm an empath and maybe because I do Reiki but I can feel people's energy as soon as they come into class we connect we talk and then I develop my practices almost more intuitively lately um, so I'm a bit to another side then there yeah like, I'm a little bit um, well I'm a whole lot clairsentient which is like I can feel things in my body and so if I'm in a practice and all of a sudden my back is sore, I'm like, okay, we're going to work our backs right now. And then if all of a sudden my one arm, I'm like, okay, we're going to stretch this out. And I've had clients afterwards say to me, like, uh, that was perfect. Like my back has been so sore today. I don't know how you did that. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so you're connecting even sometimes without even knowing that's got to be Yeah, hard, like, and right? there was no intention necessarily for that to happen. And hopefully I had their, um, I normally always ask for consent, obviously. <laughs> so I'm like, I guess, you know, it's interesting to me, though, that they, they join this online space and we've been able to connect regardless. I've had clients say that, like, it, it feels like the same exact class, like we're right there with you in bloom. The difference is I can't hug my clients. Yeah. It's right. amazing, you know, and, and we've kind of gone through similar things that, you know, my brother's martial arts school, yeah. right? both in martial arts. And it's amazing, even though we've, we're connected, you know, on, through, you know, Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, it's um, that human element's still there. I really uh -huh. thought, I think a lot of people were really worried about it. It's still there. When you're seeing mm -hmm. Joe, you're seeing Sally, they're still the same person. You, like, exactly like you said, you feel their energy and I can right. feel it. You hear it in their voice. You see it in their smile, right? It's like, it's, it's yeah. so, so I want to say that it's, it's been a good experiment on one hand as well to show yeah. people you don't need to be right beside each other. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, we do, I, I do appreciate that physicalness too. Yeah, I think, you know, like I just knew that I needed to continue doing what I was doing because I knew the world needed yoga yes. Um, yes. really badly and meditation and healing of all Even time. more now, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, you know what, I want my, my clients to still have their safe space to come to. 
Um, and so I was like, here we go. So I recorded a bunch of videos for them and gave them to them. And we had an online group so that we had that community still and that connection. And then it morphed into, okay, well, let's just take this online. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we do right now just a class once a week. Um, come the fall, I might stick with the platform until I know for sure it's safe um, and make the best of it. Like I'm just creating these really cool programs that kind of incorporate that whole mind, body, soul concept. Um, I love teaching workshops about like essential oils, crystals, the moon cycles, how to, you know, uh, so the chakras, like that kind of stuff. So I'm going to tie all like the yoga classes to stuff like that um, and just make these kind of really great programs for people. Yeah. And yeah, for now anyways, right? Like, I mean, I still have the vision of my beautiful, safe healing space. Um, so it, it, it'll come in time when the world's ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, that's the thing too, is we're all kind of waiting to see what's, what's going to happen and evolve. And, but oh I like God. it that, I like it that, you know, your business and other businesses, are, we are evolving. You know, we're, we're, we're pivoting and saying, well, we're going to go online. Let's, let's take advantage yeah. of the, the technology, right? Like, like you said, even who someone who, or people who are not necessarily tech savvy, well, that's okay. You have, you have a husband who's tech savvy. You got a friend who's tech savvy, yeah. you know, we'll figure it out and let's get it on. And yeah, absolutely. Um, well, and I even for me, like I, I love that now I can reach people because I, I live down south now, but like I love that I can reach people in Sault Ste. Marie now, right? Yes. Like I couldn't do that before. Yeah. And it's literally as easy as a click of a button. Like it's yeah. just a link that I send them and they click and then there I am. And it's, it's worked really well and it shocked me. I'm not going to lie. It shocked me because I thought, oh man, I don't want to be on camera. Yeah. Like that's not... <laughs> I'm like, please no. <laughs> yeah, but, but I bet you within a, within a couple of times, right? No big deal. Or well, how did you feel? Yeah. 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 No, you know what? The first, actually, I won't, I won't lie that I'm such an emotional feeler of a person. The very first class I taught, I actually cried. Oh, I can believe it. I believe it. <laughs> because it was like, oh my gosh, it's this a big is deal, exactly man. what we needed. This oh, is a yeah. big deal, right? Like we all needed this, you know, um, and it I, just uh, really tell you, cool. my, my first podcast guest I cried after as well. So I could feel it. I believe yeah. it. You know what I mean? It's like Aww. you're doing one thing, right? You're like, you're, 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 it's nice when you're, you're being receptive, of course, and people are, are benefiting from it. that's the best thing. You can help one person, yeah. right? I mean, I'm sure that's the whole intention behind everybody's business, right? Oh my gosh. Like I, I knew going into this business, I was like, if I could help one person the way that like I knew yoga and Reiki and meditation yeah. helped me, I was like, I'll be happy. Yeah. Even if it's one person right um you know and my business is small like i pride myself on that small like supportive customer service experience right like my clients know they can write me with anything and i'm usually very responsive to get back to them um and so i like the fact that it's this little thing but then at the same time i'm like i want to help more people too yeah. which, it, if which we is build it, if we build it it'll come right <laughs> if we build it yeah. more, you know exactly yeah it, it takes uh you know it, it's good and and like i mean like other small businesses, I'm sure, you know, it starts with family, friends, neighbors, kids you grew up with, you know, yeah. relatives, things like that, right? So, and, and that's the, you know, one of the great things about the internet, many great things, of course, about the internet is that, um, you know, it does let us connect with people, right? Like you said, even though yeah. we're from Sault Ste. both of us are from Sault Ste. Marie, we're down yeah. in the Kitchener area, Waterloo area. Um, yeah. And, you know, are, are, is there still quite a few clients back home or how do you, where are your clients from? Yeah, most of them are sort of within Southern Ontario, okay, but I yeah. have like a handful from um, up north now, and I have a handful from the States now. So, nice. and, and be only because we moved to this online space, right? Yeah, and it is a benefit, right? It's, it's one of the things that, yeah. you know, traditionally maybe a personal trainer or a yoga instructor or even a Reiki instructor, uh, you know, practitioner would yeah. have thought, oh, my local space is limited, but now this, this really is a new space. So Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So Jen, how can people get a hold of you? How could they, where, where are you available? Like online? Tell us how we can get in touch with you. Yeah, basically. Um, so of course I'm on all the channels cause you know, that's how we, we <laughs> are. We are now. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty visible on, um, Instagram, which is okay. just, uh, bloom with Jen bloom with and Jen. with two ends. Okay. And then, um, on Facebook, I think it's actually, so my website and Facebook both are Breathe, Stretch, Grow. Okay. Um, that was sort of like my tagline when I was yeah. starting Bloom. Um, 
yeah and then there's the website too which like tells you more about like my story and stuff like that too but um i would say most of my clients end up connecting with me i think instagram's kind of more the bigger thing okay. right now i feel like for most of like around our generation and younger yeah. so um i feel like that's just a really great tool yeah. i and it's i'm starting to be more brave with videos and posting yeah. videos too now and yeah, people love that they love the on uh, the media right the content just yeah like i mean i love i'm i'm big on writing i have a blog i love writing um my posts are always heartfelt and written by me and um but i i there was something about like getting my energy across those two um mm -hmm. because sometimes the written word can be misinterpreted yeah um so it's nice to actually talk to somebody and be like okay well no this was my intent behind it and this is my energy um you know which i hope is sort of warm and inviting and you know Absolutely. i know i'm i can be a lot sometimes but <laughs> <laughs> so if so if someone wants to jump in or and you know join the weekly classes is it weekly classes you said you have or is it yeah. like a membership how does that work like yeah, how do you, right, how do you... right now, so what I was doing, because honestly, I we none of us knew how long this sure. would go on. Um, I was just week to week kind of creating programs. Um, yeah. And so I would say I'm doing once a week right now just because summer's slower, sure. um, which rightfully so. I oh, mean, get yeah. up and enjoy the, the world, right? Um, exactly. But once it comes to fall, I'm probably going to be doing like a four-week program or an eight-week program and break it off into chunks. Um so, but most of that I just advertise basically on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and then people just register through me and then I send them the link to click and join and that's it. That's awesome. So it's pretty so, simple, right? It's Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then it depends. Like Reiki works a little bit differently. A lot of people will private message me and then we just book that at a mutually convenient time. Okay. Um, most of what I do is I send now clients meditations to do while they're relaxing. I work from here in this space and then we chat afterwards. Okay. So whether we connect on Zoom or um, FaceTime or even the telephone, okay. we talk about your session after the fact. Um, just because I find, I, I've tried to do Reiki sessions via Zoom okay. and I found it really hard for the client to actually truly relax because they kept kind of opening their eye and- Look at the camera probably. <laughs> I think you just muted maybe for a second. Are you there? Oh. Are you still there? I am. Okay, Sorry. No, it's all good. of a sudden I got a warning. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like you were saying, um, the, the sessions, right? Yeah. So the sessions will... Um, this actual weekly sessions will come up in the fall uh, but right now it's just a week to week and i'm just doing um various classes so awesome yeah awesome. yeah well, well thank you so much jen for for sharing with me and with with my listeners and my viewers um yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to make sure we, we put all your, your information in the show notes and everything and then we can check out your website uh oh. any any last words for uh my listeners for the viewers any any anything you can oh share my with them <laughs> Honestly, um, right now, from it's, energy healing itself, you know, anything so, yeah. for me, it's like right now, I, um, I hope that people are taking really good care of themselves. That's uh, like, I can't stress that enough. And, and, and for me, that's walking barefoot in mama nature and gardening and, um, connecting to myself and, you know, just taking time to actually rest and breathe and, um, the breath is so powerful, right? So in and of itself awesome. and just do the things that you love and be so kind to yourself. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's amazing, Jen. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing with all my listeners and all our viewers and uh, have a great night. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's say bye to everybody. Bye. And we'll say thanks for listening. Say thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>